Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. I'm Ken Hamilton. And we are talking this week about something sticky, talking about shame. Um, We're talking about shame this week. Actually, this is your idea. This was my idea. This is something that comes up for me a lot, and I have a lot of thoughts about it, and I think that a lot of people do. So we're specifically going to talk about shame as it relates to our connection to our partners and our ability to to connect to people in our lives. And since sex is a subset of connection, as you just said, sex is one of the ways where we can start to notice shame showing up if we turn an eye to it. But it's not simple. So let's just right away, let's just define what we're talking about exactly. Um, Because shame... It, it has entered the conversation more and more, the word shame. We're talking about it more and more. I think that when I was younger, shame was what we would describe in relationship as, as I have baggage. You'd say to somebody like, oh, I have baggage. And the, the, the thing you weren't naming was all your shame stories, all the stuff that you had shoved in a bag that you were dragging behind you. And of course, we didn't say shame if we could avoid it because it's shameful to have shame. (laughs) Right. (laughs) This is tricky, tricky, Mm -hmm. right? So I have found that when I differentiate, and I think lots of people are talking about it this way now, when I differentiate shame, like core shame messages, the message that, that you've received that you are inherently flawed in some way, there's something wrong with you. You are bad. You are there's some negative word attached to your essential nature is separate from um, shame that is actually guilt. It's it's the the sensation that you experience, the feeling you experience when you have done something harmful mm-hmm. and been called out on it, or have noticed it yourself, or even haven't noticed it, but it's just kicking your ass inside. Um, so let's just be clear. We're we're sorting these things out, and that matters to me a lot because. I have seen people try to use their very natural guilt response. They know that they've acted in a harmful way. They're aware of it. And they don't have a container for that. They don't know where to put it. And so as a defense, they throw up this, you can't shame me. Don't shame me. My Mm -hmm. feelings all count. They do. Your feelings all count. That's true. But that doesn't mean that you didn't cause harm. And by throwing up shame as a defensive block, all you're doing is blocking connection further, yeah. make putting yourself further away from the problem. That's the time to really, that's the time to find a therapist for sure, for yourself, no matter whether your relationship is hurting or not. If your shame work is so, <laughs> is so undone, find help, get, get a, another Absolutely. voice in your head. Yeah, get another voice in your head. And um, and some of your feelings, like if you're, if your issue is, is coming up because of your relationship. Well, that isn't necessarily something between you and your partner or partners. It's, you know, all the stuff that starts with you might be worthwhile finding someone who isn't in a committed relationship with uh, with you to talk to about it. So this has come up for you a lot lately because you and I talk about relationships a lot and we talk about our relationship a lot. And I have a bit of skill in that area. You you also have some skills in this area, but I'm not always the best person to help you. Yeah. Uh, I'm too close to the situation. Too close to the situation. And sometimes the interaction itself has effects on our relationship. Right. You know, that, that it doesn't need to, because I could go into, we could have a whole (laughs) other episode on that. So let's pin that and come back and revisit the whole concept of therapizing your spouse or your partner or our partners because that's the role you've been put into or because it's the role you always pick up. Let's come back to that. Let's come back to that. But you wanted to talk about shame because we have been doing some really conscious shame work here in the house um, between us, but 
honestly, like primarily your stuff. Primarily this was my a, stuff. This was a, it was like we'd uncovered something. So we've been hanging out together for a long time and we've been in a committed relationship for 11 years, over 11 years now. And shame yeah. only recently entered the chat. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You and I have had relationship, this relationship for uh, 11 years and I've had a relationship with myself for 54 years. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Um, and and it this is just starting to come out because boy, does shame know how to hide and masquerade as other things yes. and just vanish. Yeah. It's, it's, and so the reason that I want to talk about this now is that what I found was that everywhere I looked, everything I tripped over in my life, in my relationship with you, but also my relationship with the kids, my relationship with myself, all the stuff that I try to do. Friendships like, you tried to make. Friendships I tried to make. Dating every, you were doing, yeah. Every, um, every obstacle that I, that I hit was in some way related to shame. Which doesn't, I think, it doesn't mean the inverse is true. It's not that shame was necessarily creating every obstacle. Uh, that's right. But no. there was an aspect of each of these these bumps in the road, these mm -hmm. um, breaks, your interruption of connection, yeah. um, ruptures of trust, things like that. Yeah. There was this aspect of shame that kept popping up, popping up. And it used to be that, so you have so much confidence so much confidence that I mistook that for years. I mistook that for being, um, for you having not like had not a lot of internalized shame. Well, right. And right? so did I, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mistook that for not having a lot of internalized you, shame. Me, shame. No, of course not. You carry, look at me. <laughs> yeah. You carry yourself with a lot of confidence. But, some might have called it arrogance. And Especially some of it in was younger years, and some, some of, of it was, was confidence, and some of it arrogance. was arrogance. Some of it was absolutely uh, over the top, and uh, some of that yeah. was, in fact, in response to the shame, trying to over, like to um, to yell louder than the shame. Wow! With my arrogance. Okay, so I got to know you first when I was a kid, and you had what looked like a pretty charmed life with with some very glaring exceptions to that charmed life. But I know, but you but were charmed in the, on the whole. You were, yeah. you know, you were in the gifted program in high school and you were all so special and you were good at things and you played instruments and you were just so good at things. And, and I had the lowest GPA in the National Honor <laughs> Society. And somehow that was, that was still amazing. <laughs> it really doesn't matter what the facts of it were. No, it doesn't. From my perspective, <clears throat> As, a, as somebody 10 years younger than you, you were on a pedestal, you appeared to be sort of above it all, and you appeared to have some quality, some capacity that let you rise above, um, I don't know, wherever the heck I was. And that also shielded me. I didn't see how you then had to keep up this mystique. You had, because I knew you then, and I had put you on this pedestal, there, like the level more that you would have to reach through in order to, in order to expose the pieces of you that you were ashamed of, because right. that's a that's a an interesting word there, right? Like ashamed, like ashamed is that I feel ashamed of myself. We right. we add the a to yeah. it, and we we mean I feel ashamed. You're you feel it deeply internalized. Uh -huh. You had this reputation for being this very put together, confident man even as a young man. And so to admit shame would have been to fall even further. That's right. And so you've been doing a lot of unpacking. Mm -hmm. That unpacking has led us to, like, I didn't realize that there was another whole layer for us to get to right now. I mean, I, I feel like yeah. we just tripped into it, oh, I don't know, a month ago. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you remembered how we started talking about this. I do. Because I don't. I do. Um, it was almost accidental. It's not like we haven't been talking about these these issues around what you might be ashamed of or whatever. That's come up before. Therapists have brought it up. Um, Dr. Green had brought it up with right. us. Absolutely. But it entered our conversation about a month ago in this really strong way. When I was talking with, I was talking on another podcast and I started talking about shame and you and I started talking about it and you had a moment where you said, 
oh, no, no, I feel like that part of me is wrong. It's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about sex. We were talking about masturbation and sex. Right. And um, I thought we'd already dealt with that. So many times we talk about masturbation very easily. It's not a problem. Um, we participate in it individually and together. But all of a sudden, boom, there was something. Yeah. Something had hooked. Something had caught your attention. And so we started unwinding. It was like a, it was like a cat having gotten a hold of a ball of yarn. We started unwinding <laughs> yeah. it and realizing that your shame story was so deep yeah, that it, it was actually blocking an enormous part of our connection. And I didn't know that that was true. And I, I don't, I'm not taking responsibility for it. I, I'm actually just so excited. Me too. And so to it find is a whole new part of you. <laughs> um, well, so for, in my experience, the feeling of the shame is something that, um, is extremely uncomfortable. I don't like it at all. But talking about the shame is the opposite. It actually, when it, when I can bring it up and we can talk about it, it is, it is the exact opposite of shameful. It feels exciting, and it's it's because of how we talk about it and the way you receive it and how you interact with me around it. I can I can trust you not to poke me in my shame. I can trust you to see it. And just let it be. And it's freaking amazing. So witnessing. So just practically witnessing. speaking, I think it's this is a good place to get into the practicalities. I mm -hmm. think we've done three specific things that have helped this conversation take our relationship just like like this month, just take it to another level. And that is we started using the word shame, separating it from guilt. Yeah. We, we defined our terms up front. Defining your terms is very important with me, Professor Roland, like, like just yep. powered that in. And I like I've stuck with it define your terms. We defined what we were talking about. And as soon as I realized that we were talking about your deeply felt internalized shame pieces, we started naming shame when it came up. Mm -hmm. So when we were having casual conversations and you would feel it, you would name it. You would say, oh, I feel a shame thing. I, I feel shame. And, yeah. and you actually apologized a few times at the beginning. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm saying it again. I'm saying it again. I'm saying shame, shame, shame. But that helped me so much because when you would say the word, I'm like, okay, I would just set down any preconception I had about what you were about to say, just set it aside. I didn't have to not have the preconception. I just, or, or the, the judgment, I just set it aside and turned to you and listened to whatever it is that you needed to say, because the shame piece was ready to be visible. It's, it's like a little autonomous. This is this is the complex yeah. piece. It's like a little autonomous piece of you was ready to step forward into a spotlight and say, "Hi, I'm here, and I find myself disgusting." Uh, mm -hmm. so what do you think? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. all I needed to do was pause. Now I do this professionally, not a problem. But it was the word and you saying the word. So I had this. I had a clue. So it set a habit loop off. I got a cue from you. The word shame became a cue and I could pause and just say, okay, just be present. This isn't going to take forever. This isn't going to derail the whole day. Just be present, turn to you, make eye contact and show you that my body is turned toward you. And you, it was amazing. And I have a question for you. So um, my feeling and the reason that I apologized for bringing up shame over and over again when it first came out was that. I didn't want you to think that I was using it as an excuse to get out of other work yeah. um, for taking responsibility for a problem I had caused or something like that. And uh, I was, a, and the thing is, I know I, <laughs> my unconscious tends to try to protect me from taking responsibility. So I was aware that that was something I might do. How did you decide that that's not what was happening? Okay, I witnessed something different happening because every each time you brought it up. So I gave you I gave you the first few free. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be here for them. And what I was noticing is it was shifting. You were shifting. You were naming the feeling you were having. And so your behavior was changing so fast, so fast. I was shocked. That was actually some of I mean, you have done some quick turns before when when needed. Um, when your behavior was just not, and they're okay. notable because they're notable. the rest of them are really slow. It's true, <laughs> but your behavior was changing, and you were helping me. So we were teaching each other how to treat each other yet again, as we have been since the beginning. Yeah, we. I heard you say shame. I turned toward you, and 
in, in reward for that, I got you. You were at, you came further out of that shell. You dropped the armor a little bit more. You let me see new parts of you. And I could have held that space for you in a professional sense. I could have just been there for you. But instead, if this was me actually saying, no, wait, this is the exciting part. This is when you get to find out who else he is. Yeah. And so that's where I drew the patience from. <clears throat> there was a little bit of need for patience because your stories would be a little slow. The shame would get in the way. And oh, my stories we'd go are for slow. a whole long walk, you know, an hour yeah. and a half walk. And you should see me trying to edit these podcasts, taking all the silences out when I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's totally wonderful for me, though. What we did was name the thing. You started naming shame. And then I used what skills I already had. I just turned them toward you and decided that you weren't using them as an excuse. And I just watched what's happening. What's happening exactly. And what I noticed is it wasn't about me at all. It was so simple. It just wasn't about me at all. It was about your experience of yourself. And so you took a phenomenological approach of yeah. what's happening and deciding that it was about me. And I mean, it is because you have no responsibility and you have only minor ability to influence my shame. Yeah. And I'm what doing I what I can to support you in unpacking it. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that is absolute. Patience. Not my strong suit of your of past, but I think I've I've developed it quite a bit. Well, I have absolutely no complaints in this in this area um, because the thing that I need from you, um, the thing that works best for me, is for you simply to observe that I am feeling shame. So the, that has worked for me. I, I I observe you, and here's why it works for me, and why this is so genuinely exciting. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because I have one of the first things I said to you in a, in an intimate moment was you're a secret keeper. Yeah. And it scared me and intrigued me. I was nervous. I don't care for secrets. That's not my jam. And I'm good at privacy. I understand privacy. And in fact, I like, I relish privacy because it, it lets there be things behind closed doors. And yeah, I like that. That's fun. But secrecy, you said something the other day that I actually wrote down and stuck on a sticky note above my desk. You said secrecy is fertile ground for shame to yeah. take hold. Yep. Tell me why you said that. You had, I don't remember what we were talking about. I mean, we were talking about shame. And there was something about how, I mean, for me, well, um, every lie I have ever told you is because of shame. And I hate lies and so no, much. They, they're such a struggle for me. So they have caused the biggest problems between us. And yet, when I hear you say that, I'm like, every lie you've ever told me was rooted in shame. Like, oh, light bulbs. I get that. When when clients and friends tell me that, I get it. But mm. I I hadn't applied it to you. Yeah. I think of you as this confident, self-assured, comfortable man. And a lot of me is. And I forget that there are still these parts yep. to you. And so I was thinking about And that. so you mean specifically not just lies of of like lies out cuz you you aren't much of a liar. But you will omit no, the hiding of things, hiding and, things, um, the secret, and so that's so secrecy and lies yeah. of omission, right? They they get all woven together into what turns out for me is not you. It's yes. it's a persona, it's yep. a piece, it's a it's a, but it's not it's not your essence. It's not who you are for me. It's not the you I see when we've locked eyes and we're in the middle of a passionate moment. That that's the you I know is there. Mm -hmm. But this secrecy and the shame. The secrecy and, this... and shame are like a yin yang. Mm. It's not just that secrecy provides fertile ground for shame. Shame inspires secrecy also. I mean, for me, shame inspires me mm. to hide. And then that hiding is itself shameful. Yeah. Like it's so. And, like and if, if you hide, like start from nothing, you have something, you hide it. Why are you hiding it? 
And one of the answers can be because it's shameful. So if you're hiding something for whatever reason, it may feel shameful. You can actually create a shameful And now feeling. that it feels shameful, you hide it even so that's more. A, so that's um, what a, so like a perverse pearl. You uh, get a little secret, yeah. it goes inside, you start oh. coating it with something. And now it has, yeah. And I, mean, I and have yet, watched myself do that. Okay. But here's where it is like a pearl for real. Mm. Because what has happened is over the course of this month, we have found whole new aspects to our sexuality yep. together. Yeah. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff hiding in the shame closet that fits into our, how do we play at the edges of our comfort? Yeah. How do we enjoy each other in new ways as a couple who's been together for a long time? And even though we're consensually non-monogamous, it's a quarantine pandemic time. This is not a time when we're having a bunch of other relationships that are that kind of close. So... It's going to be a whole new relationship so, uh, design of quarantined Quarantined, poly. yeah, that's a, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. So right now, all of a sudden, a year into this quarantining, yeah. there's a new Ken yeah. next to me. Yeah. Fascinating. Who's that guy? That, that could be made fun. the sex very interesting. Yes. All of a sudden, a new, and I didn't, it's not like we haven't been flipping over rocks. I am a professional rock flipper. That's what? what I do. I flip over rocks and I look for the gross and, and, and crawly stuff because I think it's great. I didn't realize that there was a great big rock sitting right in front of me. And it's so exciting. I'm like practically shaking right now. Yeah, it because is. Because, and, and now I'm thinking about the, the pearl divers. The, yeah. the free divers. I dive into my unconscious, hold my breath, uh -huh. subside into all the stuff that I don't know about myself and find these, these little shame nuggets and bring them out and say, I have felt shame about this and I have hidden it away. And now I'm bringing it out. And you're like, well, let's well, see that. Let's then. see that pretty thing. Cause and, it's not because the thing that we feel shamed about isn't necessarily. And in fact, a lot of the time is actually a really gentle, tender, or yep. or or fascinating. Even mm -hmm. if it's even if it's harsh, yeah. often it's fascinating. Some of it taking from the taking starting from the point of view of people are interesting, and even when people are bad, they're not you know are acting bad. They're still of value. And you get into that, you can look at the things that people are ashamed of or uh, think are bad about themselves and say, oh yeah, but but tell me more about that. That's oh, really yeah. amazing. And wow, and what, what an experience that is and what you made out of it. Yeah. And some of the things that you've made out of it have turned out to be stories. So we talked about sexual fantasy last mm -hmm. time. Some of the pearls that you've made have been these stories. Yeah. And the stories that we've been practicing sharing with each other, which aren't just like, they're not just stories their um their live storytelling we're right. telling a story to each other but there that pearl can be the 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 seed yep. the piece that yeah. begets this complicated story it that holds allows the us energy to, of the story it holds some of the details that liven up the story and, and then all of a sudden the shame is both present and desirable in its own bizarre way. Thomas More, the scholar Thomas More, um, he writes beautifully about the perverse nature of psyche, how, how psyche will splay open innocence for its own reasons. Um, if you haven't read the book Dark Eros by Thomas More and you're finding any of this interesting, I highlighted essentially the entire book <laughs> and then used it as a jumping off point for my dissertation. In fact, I was lucky enough to have Dr. More as um, one of my advisors for my dissertation. That that sense of perversion, that word perversion, it, it's it's related to inversion, upside down, the world turned upside down, the world not as we believe it should be. This sharing of our shame stories, not in a self-flagellating way and not in a way to just like be relieved. I don't say to you, oh, don't be ashamed of that. No. I just bear witness to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the other big thing. I'm just bearing witness to it. And then what I noticed is after about a week or so of you sharing shame stories, like left and right all the time, because we talk off and on all day, any day, some of mine started to pop up. Yes. And I was like, well, damn, what the hell is that? Didn't know that was there. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. I actually needed the example right in front of me. Now, it happens in my professional life that people share these kinds of stories with me. But in that, I'm holding the frame. 
you know, like a dancer holds the frame. I'm holding the frame. So I'm not feeling my own, but with you, I'm not doing therapy or counseling or coaching or anything. I'm just next to you. So I'm next to you. And as you're talking about shame, all of a sudden I realize, oh, I've got some sexual shame stuff too. And it's not that it's sexual. It's it has taken a sexual tone inside yes. of yep. me. Now, Freud got a lot of stuff wrong. He can be really, really gross. But if we throw out all that gross stuff and we leave behind a few of the little awesome nuggets, one of them that I find fascinating is that when we're young, we will turn things that are terrible and feel terrible, internalized shame being one of them, we'll turn them into desire. And I don't really care whether people like Freud or hate Freud. I have found that truth to be very gentle for my soul. Oh, some of the things that I find perverted about me, that I find perverse about me, are that way because I needed to find a way for them to be part of my wholeness. I needed to find a, a way to make some of these gross, icky things attractive yeah, and tolerable. And, and I wish some of those things had never happened, except they did. And so this is how I'm formed now. This is the unique way that my crystal grew because of it. Yeah. I'm coming to appreciate more and more how each of us, you and I, are sharing these stories. And now there's just more aspects of us. We're not, yeah. they're not shared and go away. They're shared and, oh, wow, look at all that. Yeah, that has been, um, so the, the door opens on one of my little shame secrets and it's like, sometimes it comes out and sort of blends into everything. Sometimes it stays there, but the door stays open. Yeah. It's not locked back up because if that door gets closed again, now which it can, I, I mean, I can. feel it even right now, just this morning, it almost did. Uh huh. So just this morning, if you're comfortable Go talking ahead. about it. Yeah. So just this morning. It'd be easier if you say it. But you, yeah. <laughs> so you came to me. I came to you and I said, hey, we're going to talk about shame. You're like, oh, uh, I'm not. I can't. I don't think I'm ready to talk I about it. You, I feel blocked. I feel really blocked. I don't know. I'm going to need to get my head in it. And and I said, well, why don't we have sex? That'll get you out of your head. And and you said, well, well, let's go upstairs. Not, and I thought you were just teasing me and you were going to like put the moves on. And instead... You just wanted to be someplace private so you could tell me actually what it was is I just masturbated and I didn't want you to know. Yeah. Except we have a great and, relationship and this way. Been, yeah, we like this. It's, she, and it's, yet. Me masturbating is not a problem for her, but me telling her is a problem for me. Right. It's weird so, because here I am. I'm talking to the podcast about it. What is that? even so mean, right? clearly it's there's fine. not a problem and yet there is a problem so it's you know, it's not simple so it's not linear that's where i feel like but... the the door because we had just talked about this two days ago yeah. yesterday and today so this was like day three yeah. and yet the shame door had swung closed again so this one keeps trying to close its yeah. door on itself <laughs> and open the door open the door yeah um but it takes I feel some like effort it was a really important moment to just say okay this is the thing i don't want to say yep i feel ashamed and what you noticed and what you said to me was, I know you're going to accept this. So it must be me I'm worried isn't going to accept this. There's right. nobody else in the there's room. There's nobody else here. Is well, there? now there is. Now there's well, lots now of there's people. there's all of you. So there's all of that. And you Hi. can accept or not. Yeah. Whether No matter how they feel, I feel good about it. I feel excited that you felt your own body autonomy. You felt entitled to your own body, your own pleasure at the time you wanted it. That feels great for me. It, it takes nothing away. It takes nothing away from our life together. And there is a scarcity issue There's here. Scarcity like I problem. this Im imagined scarcity that I have as though that detracts from, from our, our sexual connection, relationship our connection. Yeah, our sex life. And, um, and, and the thing is, it does if I don't talk about it. Right. As soon as I do, it's not a problem. Right. And yet for years, that's what I've done close that door yeah and so we've talked about it before like we've talked about it and then it goes back in we've talked about it, it goes back in mm -hmm. so let's see maybe telling all these people maybe the door will yeah, stay open uh, who knows yeah who could say i am super proud of you and for so just thanks for everybody it. for holding the door open for me <laughs> the whole world bearing witness to ken's masturbatory shame i like this this is nice. fun 
I am super excited about this episode. I think we're going to continue this conversation about shame because I think there are some other sides to it. Um, There's a lot. We thought that this would be one episode, but as soon as we started talking about it, I'm like, wait a minute. There's more here. We'll get through all of shame in half an hour. Sure, it'll be totally fine. Let's talk about shame and that early role that I played as the other woman. Oh. And what that meant. Yeah. I sure. would love to talk about that. Yeah, let's do that. And that is equally terrifying. I say I would love to. Like, Good for you. <gasps> Good for you. That's okay. hard. And so until next time, on. everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>